Look at this connection. This man is a self-described black Israelite. Now what this is, is a group that believes they are the true Jews. Now, this is his words. This is on November 13, 2015. He posted this uh, poster with text on it that has Adolf Hitler on it that says, Hitler knew who the real Jews were. Now, he said, the, this is the real thing right here. This is research. Clearly, this man has some foreign ideologies. Clearly, this man has some specific motivations. We can't. I, I can't be stupid enough just to believe what the police have said, that there is no evidence. What have we just shown you? This man's connection to the Black Israelites is interesting because, again, if you think back to the Covington boys, the ones that were protesting but then were harassed and, and defamed and then ultimately became millionaires, uh, Nicholas Sandman was also uh, getting intels with a black Israelite. They have a record of violence and justifying it on themselves. Clearly, in this case, there is a connection in addition to the mass murder. Now, as of the recording of this report, there are five dead, 40 wounded, and 18 children who are fighting for their lives right now. Any uh, sane American who's seen that video, that video of that SUV plowing through the crowd. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. I wanna start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yabasha, Bahashim Rokakudash. I wanna give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And grace and peace to you elect around the four winds, believing and pushing this truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Rakar here from the GMS Orlando camp. And uh, tonight, <clears throat> I wanted to bring out this exhortation for you elect, all right, concerning the persecution that is arising against the Lord's elect, all right? And uh, as you may know by now, all right, at, or as you may have seen from the video clip that played before this, all right, there's a case that's being builded against those who believe in Yahweh, while Yahweh shot. All right, there's a case being builded against those who believe in Yahweh by Shem All right, and ultimately, there is a persecution that's going to hit those who believe in Yahweh, while Yahweh shot. All right, and we're coming into those times, man, and we're for this testimony. All right, for this faith that we hold so dearly. We're going to be persecuted just just like our Lord was. All right. The scriptures say the servant is not greater than his master. All right. The servant is not greater than his Lord. And if Yahweh shot went through these things, we must go through the same things as well. All right. Understand that this battle that we're going through is a necessary battle. All right. This is the only avenue to the kingdom. This is the only avenue to the promises made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. This is the only avenue to mercy. This is the only avenue to salvation. All right, this is a necessary battle that we're getting ready to go through. All right, and this persecution that's arising, all right, this demonization of, of the righteous is necessary. All right, it's necessary. And um, recalling on a conversation I had with uh, the Zaquan Big Gap when he was down here in Florida, <clears throat> you know, one of the conversations I um, was uh, able to have with him he mentioned, you know, it's a light statement, but it's, uh, it's heavy at the same time. You know, he mentioned that, you know, we just in the time of doing the work. All right. And that's exactly what time we in, man. All right. The time of just doing the work. All right. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, we just do the work. All right. No matter how the cars, no matter how the cars fall, no matter how the cars are stacked, we just do the work. All right. Continue in the faith. You know, no matter what presents itself, no matter what obstacle presents itself in our ways here in these latter days, just continue to endure. All right. And this is the exhortation I want to bring out through the spirit. All right. To continue to endure, man. All right. We, we come out and this is an exhortation that is coming out more coming out more frequently because, you know, we, we living in those times, man. All right. It's, you know, we say it frequently, but it's serious. You know, we living in those times and where. Everything that we read about on a daily basis is getting ready to manifest in our day to day lives and each and every one of our faces is getting ready to be tested. All right. And this persecution is one of those tests. All right. But understand, man, that this is a necessary test. This is a necessary battle that we must go through in order to receive all the blessings that we read about. You understand? All right. This is a necessity. All right. In order to be joint heirs with. Mashiach, we must go through these sufferings, all right? And to be frank, 
these sufferings that the Lord is getting ready to put us through are way less than we we deserve. Way less than we deserve, man. All right, the Lord is taking it easy on us. When you really look at the whole, you know, the whole spectrum. But um, I just want to get into a couple of precepts. All right, Lord's witness is edifying unto you elect out there. All right, but one thing's for sure. All right, the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear. All right, and these things coming upon the earth, the persecution, the wars, the evils, the MOTB. All right, all these things, the famine. All right, the sedition among men. All these things are not things to fear. All right, they're things to understand. All right, and upon getting understanding on these things, you gain a, 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 a peace about you. You know, you gain a peace in your spirit when you understand why things ha are happening. All right, see the majority. The reason why the majority of the earth is bugging out right now is because they don't have the answers. You know, they don't have the answers to why this is happening. They don't understand how they're going to get out of these certain, certain situations. They don't understand why these things are happening. You know, what's bringing it? All right, but us through the spirit and power, you how about Shemiah Shai, us that are hopefully like, we understand these things and we have answers to all these questions that the world has. And ultimately, the Lord has given us what's going to happen to his elect and, and, and how they're going to get out of it. <laughs> all right, through the spirit. So we don't have anything to fear. All right, these, these things coming upon the earth are just things to understand. All right, and to be at peace with. All right, be at peace with whatever the Lord deals in your life. Whatever call the Lord deals you in your life, be at peace with that. Whether it be in life or death, ultimately, we're going to take the dub either way. All right? Understand that there is no death. Understand that the Lord has already justified his elect. Understand these things, man. All right? Because with the proper understanding of these things comes a peace about your spirit, which is going to be the stability of your times and the strength of our salvation. Lord, one word counting that number. All right, so with that being said, let's jump into these scriptures. All right, Lord's when this is be edifying unto the elect. All right. Let's start off here in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. It reads, For the heavenly Father have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All right, now at the end of the day, you have to understand that the heavenly Father didn't give us that spirit of fear like the rest of the world. All right, the Lord gave us this truth that invoke the spirit of courageousness within us, that we may overcome and endure to the end. Lord willing, we're counting that number. All right, we didn't receive that spirit of fear. We received the spirit of courageousness. We received the spirit of overcoming. All right, we received the spirit of mercy. We received the spirit of power, man. All right, we didn't receive the spirit of fear. All right, we received the spirit uh, of our ancient forefathers. <laughs> All right, all right, a faithful spirit. That's the type of spirit we, we inherited. All right, coming back into this truth. And you have to embrace that, man, especially in the times that we're coming into. It says, for the Heavenly Father have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, man. And that's one thing amongst many, all right, that the Heavenly Father has also blessed us with, a sound mind. All right, a mind to understand and comprehend the things that are coming upon the earth. All right. A mind to understand the will of the Heavenly Father. A mind to understand the, the standard of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh A mind to understand the Lord's likes, his dislikes. His, his will for his men on the earth. What he's looking for in a man. What he's looking for in a woman. What he's looking for in a household. The, the Lord has given us a sound mind, man. A, a mind of understanding and comprehension. <laughs> which, is, which is a blessing. Alright? Which is... is Far from that spirit, that spirit of fear, all right, that the rest of this world has, man. All right, it says, For the Heavenly Father have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All right, and that, that spirit of power, that spirit of a sound mind are things that we have to embrace, man. All right, because it's going to take a very sound mind to overcome and endure in these latter days. It's going to take a very sound spirit to overcome and endure in these latter days. And if you aren't embracing that, you won't have it, all right? Because these are things, the Lord has given us these, these tools now because faith is something that you have to exercise. You know, a sound mind is something that you have to exercise. It doesn't come overnight. Faith doesn't come overnight. The type of faith that we're going to need at least doesn't come overnight, all right? That type of faith that the Lord is looking for comes through experience, through trials, through tribulations, through going through shit, you know? That's why we receive this truth now. So that we might apply it to our lives 
and gain that experience so that when the game time comes, we already been putting up shots in the gym. So we already know what's next. We already know how to shoot this free throw. We already know how to shoot this three pointer. We already know how to shoot this, this mid range, man. It's repetition to us. It's muscle memory, man. And that's how we want faith to be coming into Jacob's trouble. That's how we want faith to be coming into the eye of temptation, like muscle memory. That's how we want trust in the Lord to be, like muscle memory. Without a doubt, hey, look, they saying take the chip or die. We're going to trust in you. How about Shemiah was shy? Oh, they're saying they got a case against us. They're saying, oh, we're going to court for uh, being a Hebrew Israelite. Well, we're going to trust in you. How about Shemiah was shy? He's going to give us the words to say. He's going to get us through it. We want it to be like that, man. All right. But um, let's grab this. This is <clears throat> second. Nah, let's get this in Romans chapter eight. All right. And these scriptures don't necessarily go back to back. All right. These are just scriptures that popped into my mind, you know, as I was meditating on this topic. All right. Lord's witness is utter fine until you let. This is Romans chapter eight. And um, I'm going to start at verse 16. And we're going to jump down because it's a lot to get here in Romans eight. All right. It says, <clears throat> well, let's start at verse 15. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, where, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Heavenly Father. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Heavenly Father, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if so be that we suffer with him. That we may also be glorified together. All right. So in order to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, we got to go through these sufferings. All right. The same sufferings that he went through. All right. And also remember that scriptures say in John 15 in chapter 20, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both, it's like it, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. All right, so the Lord said, the servant is not greater than his master. And if they listen to his words, they'll listen to us. But guess what? They didn't listen to Yahweh Shah when he was on the scene. They called him a, a drunkard, man. They thought he was crazy. Just like they're going to think of us in these, in these latter days for the very same message. We come, understand, we come in the very same stead of Yahweh Shah and the prophets, man. The very same message that they was preaching of the Lord's return, of the Lord coming to correct this world of wickedness. All right, uh, of the Lord being displeased with this place, of the judgment coming upon the earth, we come in that very same stead. All right, like the prophets before us, pursuing the Jeremiah 28 and 8. All right, we come in that very same stead. And guess what they did to the prophets before us? They persecuted them, man. They hated them. They hated them for this message. Why? Because men love darkness rather than light. And this truth is the light. And when it's presented, these people don't want it, man. Because they're a bunch of cockroaches, man. They hate, they want to flee from this light, man. They hate it because they've been allowed to fulfill the lust of their flesh for so long. Anything else feels foreign to them. You know, these people don't want nothing outside of something that pleases their five senses. They can't touch it, smell it, feel it, hear it or see it. They don't want it, man. And this message is, is not one that's really tangible right now. It's something that has to be received through faith. And, the, and this world, man, is faithless. It's been taught to be faithless by the rulers that be. And that's why Yahweh Shai said when he returns to the earth, shall he find faith on the earth, man. Because this is a faithless generation, bro. We live in a generation where <laughs> it's, it's, it's doomed, man, to say the least. All right, we can sit here all day and explain this generation. We'll be here all night. All right, to put it in simple terms, this generation is fucked. It's over, man. And Yahweh Shai is coming to correct this generation, man. And that's the same things that the prophets before us were saying. And they were hated for saying the same thing we saying now. So guess what? We're going to have to go through this. This is a necessary battle. This is a coming of age, so to speak. All right. These are just things to overcome and endure. All right. Understand we got to go through these things. Understand that these things are coming. All right. Understand that 
you can't circumvent your way out of these things. All right. Understand that in order to be a joint heir with Hamashiach, we got to go through this, man. All right. We got to go through this. We got to do this. All right. Just like the prophets before us, just like Yahweh shot before us. We got to do that. All right. But the Lord gave us the spirit. All right. And the faith and the mind to be able to do that. All right. To be able to do this, you know. So continue to endure, man. All right. It says. Back in uh, Romans eight. In uh, verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory with the glory that sh which shall be revealed in us. All right, and these, these present sufferings that we were going through and are going to go through are nothing compared to the glory that the Lord has stored up for us. What will we encounter that number? All right, we're talking about everlasting, everlasting life. Yeah, immortality. All right. Something that a lot of Israelites on this side can't even comprehend, man. Don't have the faith to comprehend. We're talking about immortality. We're talking about a world where it's going to be nonstop learning. <laughs> all right. It's going to be uh, assurance of life. All right. The commonwealth of Israel is going to be implemented. All right. We're going to have uh, daughters, sons, wives, you know, husbands. You know, we're going to have uh, uh, a full nation, you know, to say the least. All right, to say the least, we're going to have a full nation, man. A nation where everybody that you know and everybody that they know is straight. Everybody knows the Lord. <laughs> All right. Nobody's going off. Everybody's good. And everybody's just able to live like the Heavenly Father intended us to live. <laughs> that's what we and that's what we're fighting for at the end of the day, too. You know, that's why we go through these sufferings, because we we see the vision. All right. We see the bigger picture that the Lord has laid out for our people. You know, and we see that it's something to fight for. You know, we see that it's something to stand for when the rest of our nation don't see don't see it the same way. When the rest of the world don't see it the same way. We see it, man. You know, we see it. And since you can see it, stand for it. Stand for it. Fight for it, because it's something to fight for. All right. It says. No matter what we going through on the side, man, because nothing we go through can be compared to that type of glory. All right, I don't give a damn what you throw out there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what you throw out there, man. Can't nothing compare to the glory that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has stored up for his elect. But um, I'm going to jump down to verse 28. All right, it says, and we know. That all things work together for good to them that love the Heavenly Father. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. More, moreover, whom he did predestinate, hit us out. Them he also called. And them he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If the Heavenly Father be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Check this out. Who shall lay anything to the charge of the Heavenly Father's elect? It is the Heavenly Father that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is a Mashiach that died, yet rather that is risen again, who is given at the right hand of the heavenly? Who is even at the right hand of the heavenly Father? Who also make an intercession for us? All right, and, and at the end of the day, man, it's Yahweh Bashmi was shy that justified. All right, can't nobody lay anything to the charge of the Lord's elect. All right, they've already been justified. All right, and we pray that we're of that number. All right, that number of those who already been justified through the Spirit. All right, because they're gonna come down. They're gonna try to condemn us. They're gonna try to, you know, come down with the hammer. But at the end of the day. They can't do nothing. They have no power outside of that which Yahweh Bashim Yahushua gives them. All right? So, um, let's get this. In 2 Timothy, chapter 2, in verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. 
No man that wharf entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man strive for the masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The, hu the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. All right, so now's the time, man, to endure hardness as a good soldier. All right, seeing that, you know, these things have been prophesied about, all right, and knowing that prophecy is, is unchangeable, unwavering, all right, it's time to endure. All right, we ain't going to get out of it. All right, we ain't going to get out of it. And either way, America's going to fall. So you might as well endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. All right, and reap the benefits of enduring that hardness. All right, this is a, it's a necessary battle. All right, it's a necessary battle. Everything that we go through on a daily basis is necessary for our character building, for our spirit building, for our faith building, all right, for the edifying of the body. Everything that we go through is a necessity. Even even these trials and tribulations. All right, even death in certain in certain cases. It's necessary. And once you understand that it's a necessary battle, you have more peace to your walk, man. All right, and enduring hardness as a good soldier won't necessarily become easier for you, but you'll have a greater peace in this battle, all right? You'll be able to maneuver, maneuver better in this battle, all right? You ask any seasoned veteran, all right? Once they've come at peace with the, with the possibility of dying, you know, with the possibility of not coming back home, they start to fight with all they got, all right? That battle becomes, that, that swing of the sword comes even more fluent to them because they're not scared no more. All right, they understand and they're at peace with both ends of the wall. You know, and no matter how it goes, they're okay with, with, with whatever it is, man. You know, Lord willing, you understand that. But um, this dog in front of me is choking. His master, you know, is trying to, is trying to get, him, get him right. You know? But um, <laughs> uh, it says, getting back to it. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Amashiach Yahweh Shai. No man that war if entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. All right, you can't be, you know, entangled with the affairs of this life. All right, your children, your wife, your kids, you know, your, your job, your, your house, your car, you know, your living situation. You can't be entangled with that, especially in the battle that we're coming into, because all these things are going to be used against us to try to get us to conform. All right, they're going to use your kids against you. They're going to use your family against you. They're going to use your, 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 your living situation, all right, your job against you. All right, and you got to be at peace with letting all that go, just like any good soldier is. All right, any good soldier is at the uh, 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 drop of the hat, ready to let go of whatever, all right, to finish that mission. And we got to be in that same type of mindset. All right, but... uh. Let me grab this and then we'll close it out. All right, it's Hebrews chapter 12. And um, one, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahweh, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Heavenly Father. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest she be weary and faint in your minds. All right, so at all times, consider Yahweh Shai his law. All right, because Yahweh Shai is the author, meaning the pioneer, all right, the beginning, the forerunner, all right, and the finisher of our faith. All right, the Lord did that. All right, he came just like us. Yeah, just like us. He had the same, some of the same thoughts, some of the same ailments. All right, some of the same emotions, some of the same fears, but he overcame it, man. And he did that. At the end of the day, he did that, man. And we want to be able to say the same thing. We want to be able to do the same thing. And the Lord showed us that it's possible. So at any time that you can get wearied in this fight of ours, in this battle of ours, remember Yahweh Shai. Remember his walk and remember how he overcame and endured. Remember how he swallowed up death and victory, man. Remember. All right. These these scriptures were put here to stir up our pure remembrance. 
Remember, man. All right. Remember your how shines walk. And continue to endure, man. Because these things, more than persecution is coming. More than persecution is coming. And with that being said, you gotta you it's time to it's time to buckle up, man. Alright, it's time to fortify ourselves mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Alright, and build up this faith, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right, that we may overcome and endure. Well, with that being said, that's really all I had to say tonight. All right, those witnesses edifying until you let. All right, shalom, stay up.